So this is the Moortown Select Board. It is Monday, <coughs> May 20th, uh, 2024. We're here at the John Hoglum uh, meeting group. And we have uh, three of us here on, uh, in, in person. There's me, Tally, uh, and Don. And then online, we have John and Robin. Um, and also, we have, as a guest, uh, Hunger for Paving, and that is Jim, I believe, from Hunger. Um, and uh, we have Sasha over here in Ray who has been uh, representing the town. So we've got the meeting uh, called to order. I'm uh, looking to see if there's any public comment. Um, there's someone coming in the door now, so I'll give them an opportunity. But, <coughs> hey there. Hi, how are you? I'm well, thanks, how are you? Good, thanks. Just started the meeting and we're uh, into the public comment. Um, is that what you're here for? No, I just came to listen because I'm new to the finance committee. So oh, I thought Linda. 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 Okay, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought. That's there you go. There you yeah. go. That's better. Those glasses. It was those glasses. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Linda, you're welcome to poke around, um, and listen, and, and help out. I know Cheryl Lynn uh, is here to talk about the finance committee, but maybe you can help out as well. Um, so, if there's no public comments, seeing nothing online or here, we're going to go ahead and move to the bids for the parking lot. Uh, we have Rory Washburn. Uh, Ray, why don't you go ahead and... Uh... Okay. Um, so we had we had bids for the uh, paving and for the concrete work. And on the paving, uh, we had two bids. Hunter for the paving, uh, which was at uh, 118 992 I'm just reading the totals. Yep. And J. A. McDonald, which is, as you know, SK Paving, uh, they were at 128, uh, 676, 27. Um, um, so those are the two bids we had. Um, Mr. Hungerford's on the line there. He did send me uh, some uh, references. Um, I feel comfortable in going forward with Hungerford paving for the project. Uh, so I want to just need the select board to, to approve, the, approve their, their bid and uh, we'll start on the contract stuff and hopefully get contracts on signed with you in the next meeting or something. Sounds good. So you want to make a motion or should I? I'll make a motion. All right, John. Uh, for uh, Hungerford Painting to do the job. For 118.992. Okay. Kelly seconds. Any um, further discussion? Kelly oh. seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Very good. Mr. Hungerford, we're all set. Um, as Ray said, Ray will be your contact, continuing to be your contact, <laughs> and we'll uh, get the contract signed by the next meeting. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you guys very much. I'm looking forward to working with you. All right, thanks. Uh, the same. Um, the board was a great project. If there's anything, uh, if Ray's not available, certainly the board here is here to help you at any point as well. Uh, just before you sign off, what's the schedule? What's the contract issue? We're going to start excavation work on the 24th of June. Uh, he's going to come in and do a little bit of painting before they start the church uh, painting part. Uh, and that is going to be uh, mid July, and then he's going to come back in and finish the project. As, as they are finishing up, he'll start painting again. So we're hoping to have the whole project done around uh, 8 16. No, I guess we don't. It'll be all done by Morphist. We'll be partying on the black. There we go. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you guys. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, the, Next bid we had was for the concrete work, and we only had one bid, and that was from CP Site Construction about Richmond. Uh, uh, Chris Palmer is the owner. Um, again, another person that I had not worked with in the past, but I had uh, looked at his references, and I met up with him on Friday and went over the job. Ray Dago and I both did. Uh, most of the concrete work is around the school, um, so I. Uh, his price was forty-two thousand nine fifty, uh, yeah, which is within reason, uh, a little bit over our budget, but within a couple thousand dollars of our budget. And so that's doing the 
the sidewalk and curbing. Yep. And as an extra, I'll probably have them do these like four slabs out here by the end of the handicap ramp. Yep. Fix those up. Um, so. Good. So here's his bid. All right. <clears throat> I'd make a motion to accept uh, CP uh, site construction for uh, uh, 42950 for the concrete work. Second. Any further discussion? All right. Uh, all in favor, vote aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Okay, so there's one more item that I need to pull on, and that is the uh, same project. And it's for, uh, <clears throat> so on the entry by the church, we're taking out the railroad tie and putting it in granite curving. And the deal is uh, the church is going to let us use their catch basin that's in their lawn for drainage and in exchange for the we're going to do the curve work. All right. All right. I don't have it in writing. I don't know if you want to get it in writing, but. I think it's important to tell you to get that in writing yeah. as we move forward. But, uh, uh, so uh, the total price of the curve is going to be around uh, 4407 and again, the, the school would be paying half of that. Um, 4000 So I just would like somebody to, uh, this is board, just to go ahead and approve that order so I can get it ordered. There is really no nobody else. I need another price on it. Yeah. It comes in grand and it's about the only supplier. So they supply the granite and they're are they also setting it as well? No, or? we'll have to set it ourselves. And either our road crew or uh, we got uh, pool and coming back in to do some work. Uh, where they do yep. the contract and I, he he has done it before. He's indicated he'd help us out if we need help. All right. Excellent. It's nice to make sure it's nice concrete. I mean, I grant it to have it done, uh, you know, properly done. Yes. Yeah. Cool. All right. I'd, uh, I'd move to go ahead and uh, get the concrete uh, right. for the uh, for the curbing in exchange for the use of the, the catch basin. Yeah. Right. All right. Okay. Is there a second, Cowley. Any further discussion on it? What was the total? Uh, uh, Forty-four oh seven and sixty-nine cents. Um, and just so it's in the meeting minutes, we'll be getting or working with the church just to get a statement from them uh, that it is uh, permission. We have permission to use the catch base. Yeah. All in favor, vote aye. 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 So, Thank you, everyone. Tom. Yes, that's sure. Can I just make a recommendation that we actually have an agreement with the church and? Get it recorded so that it's on file. Yeah, that's what it's okay. going to do. Yep. Okay. So, uh, regarding the church, there is a couple other issues. Um, the foundation for the church, uh, what I have proposed to the church is that a week before we start work, is uh, we get together the town and the church and the school videotape their foundation because there's some cracks in the foundation. Uh, we just want to document it well that before we start work, what it looks like. Yep. And after it, what it looks like. I think that's a good idea. And, Keeps um, all par parties uh, happy. Yeah. So that that's coming up. Uh, and that will be somewhere around the middle of June. Okay. We'll, I'll schedule that meeting. And everything with the road crew, I haven't really spoken to Martin uh, in recently. Uh, everything there is going well as far as their timing I, and such. Yeah, I think they're working on it. You know, I think <clears throat> they got a big assignment this year. they got a lot to do. Uh, but I think they have a good handle on it. Uh, yeah. Certainly, there's going to be bumps in the road, but, uh, you know, I think the biggest bump is the weather. You know, if we, if we have good weather, it'll be good. You know? Yeah. We definitely have a capable crew. Um, yeah, they definitely have the capable. And it's, I think it's, it's a win-win for the town. Uh, there's some maintenance that's probably going to be cut back on this summer, but I think getting the parking lot taken care of is a priority at this point, and certainly saving um, that labor and using that for our yeah. match is, is something that's worthwhile. So, um, 
I don't have an exact final cost for the parking lot right now. I'm working on it. But uh, I know the pay would be, be coming under our budget by quite a bit. Yeah. So that's good. <laughs> Okay, we've added a little bit extra drainage and a few other things, but I, I still think we'll be in a pretty good shape. Plus, we have uh, a grant, which I'm sure you're aware of from the state parking lot grant. I think it's around 123000 Yep. So, I hope we met our portion of the coal project is going to be under $100,000. Good. Well, under $100,000. That'll be well, good. I certainly need to do that. Um, any other feedback as far as the other stuff? I know you came back. It hasn't been a lot, a lot of rain since we did the uh, the other site work. Remember when you came back and pulled it a little bit? Yeah, he uh, redid the ditches by the school. I think they're working well now. I don't know. I don't know if there's anybody work on the box or on the road if they're replacing the culverts or not. But that's still an issue. Yes. <laughs> I don't. I haven't heard anything at all. or seen anything else. I, I thought there was a contract. So, yeah. I thought there was a contract. Yeah, I think he does have a contract. Or he's, Dick said they had a contract to replace the the big culvert. Yeah. Um, uh, Seth Arm was going to go up at some point and, and try to flush out the two other smaller ones if he could. If he was going to take a look at it, he thought he might be able to. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard. You know, anything. you can good for. For that, I'm, I'm not sure if he was successful or not in doing that. Mm, right. Yeah. There's a, you know, there's a few other items that uh, Connor Pullman has to work on, but they're, they're pretty minor items. Something we can't do until school gets out. Yeah. Good. So, um, that's that. Uh, you want me to talk about the theme of stuff for now? Yeah, you might as well go ahead and write do that. Okay, so. <clears throat> We're moving right along on the, on the FEMA stuff. Uh, we did get a new uh, officer to deal with about a month ago. Uh, and, he's, and he's very good. I mean, he's pushing stuff along for us. Um, all told, uh, for 2023, we have come up with around $339,000 uh, of the work that we did. Uh, and thus far, uh, we have been formally approved for $58,152. <laughs> Which is, uh, um, it seems small, but at least it's something. You know, they are working on it. I hope to have a pretty good check here, because they are pretty good approval for the balance of last year's work by within the next few weeks. Okay, good. Uh, which is another $198,000. All told, um, if it works out the way we're thinking, out of that three hundred thirty-nine thousand uh, between FEMA and the state, has said they're going to kick in another twelve percent. Uh, we'll get paid roughly around two hundred ninety-five thousand out of that three hundred thirty-nine thousand. So it'll be about forty thousand dollars difference, which that's that's pretty good. That is really good. Yeah. I think if it all works out, then you have a reason to think it's on the lower hill. Well, good, and thanks. I mean, I, I know there's a number of you working on that to make sure it's happening. You, Cheryl, and um, Martin, um, and certainly the FEMA people. Yeah, but I think Sasha, whoever else has a hand, I don't want to miss anyone, but uh, thank you for that. Uh, uh, good work. The, these totals don't include administrative work, which obviously is part of my work. Yep. And that will come at the end, and it'll be, it'll be like, it, it's 5% of what the total amount we give to us is. So I believe that even though my number are above their, above the, what our reimbursement is right now, by the time we're all done, I believe it'll be the other way around. The reimbursement will more than cover my, uh, my work. Good. Uh, so, um, 2024, uh, I, I got another sheet there, uh, and this is to complete the work we started last year on River Road and Hog Hollow and Joe Brook and, and, uh, and Ward Brook. And Lover's Lane, right? Yeah, uh, well, Lover's Lane, we haven't even, yeah. we're still in the design work for yeah. the other stuff, so 
the work we know about, the work, the work that the road crew is familiar with and are preparing to do is, is those four uh, projects, except for on Hog Hollow, we probably will sub out some of the stonework to fix that slope over there. But other than that, it'll be all on, the, on town work. And, and that's uh, another 344,000. And that is mostly surface work, almost all surface work. Right. Um, and again, out of that, between the state and FEMA, we should be you know, getting almost 300,000 on the back. So it'll be about 44,000. Uh, again, uh, that, that'll be out of our pocket. And when you consider some of that is labor and equipment of our own use, uh, I think we're right. Cash will cash our hand will be about 44,000. So, so that's so between the six hundred, yeah, six hundred. We're up to around seven hundred thousand. Seven hundred thousand for those the road work and. Again, we don't have estimates for the culverts inside because we don't have a design. But I'm sure those jobs that we don't have a price on are going to total up more than two million dollars by themselves. Which so, one? What, which, what are the, which ones are those? Those three three large box culverts and the, the slide slumbers. Yeah. Those will all add up to a couple million. Two million. So. Uh, I bet, but I don't anticipate those being done. If we're lucky, we really, I'm really pushing it through the ward work culvert in because that's the one where we have the temporary 40 inch culverts in that. Uh, the thing is going to fail. Those are going to fail. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not even the road crew did, it's just that they are too small uh, for where they're at. And we're, we're lucky we, we got through spring with them. I don't think we'll get through another winter with them. So hopefully uh, we'll have that culvert in. Uh, it may be late this year, but. And then so we're rest. going into 25 to finish the yeah. other two culverts and then Lover's Lane. Yeah. yeah. That's the plan, anyways. All right, I think you've got a good plan. I'm glad <laughs> it's a. You're working on it. That's a Fingers crossed they don't get another barrage of Yeah, I mean, that's water. the whole thing is something else to add to it. And then we're going to July, but the December rains were pretty intense. Yeah. December 18th. That's all I have to report on that. Is Clark here? Yeah. I'm dealing with Clark because we have to talk about the uh, Clean Water Committee. All right, so any, uh, before you move on, um, anyone online, John or Robin, have any questions or concerns for Ray? No, looks he's doing a great job. Sounds perfect. All right, thank you. Uh, John, you all set? Yep, it looks good. Thanks. Thanks for everything, Ray. Yeah, thank you. Um, actually, we have the yeah, finance sure. review that comes up next. You can sit there. But uh, you can sit there. Oh, uh, sorry. I mean, Sherilyn wanted to get in. Oh, uh, sure. uh, yeah, she has yeah. some. Uh, Do you want me to sit next to you in case you need to change? Yeah, that, so. why don't you? Yeah, I think John was going to start off. Isn't that what we thought? That's yeah. All right, John. Yeah. So, um, actually, just one second. I thought I had printed this up. It's all right. I'll show you the camera. Okay. Uh -huh. No, that's all right. I think actually it's probably my phone. Well, it's my fault because I didn't bring a pen. Well, there you go. 
All of a sudden, you know, people are like, hey, why is that all over his face? All right, well, well, John's away. Does anyone have anything they could sing, maybe? Or... Sorry. Oh, he's back. Go all right, John. Yeah. <coughs> oh, Ruth, be sure First just... of all, the, uh, the financing. So, Sherilyn, why don't you go over the financing? Okay. So um, the Finance Review Committee would like to recommend that we go with Community Bank at the 5.24% with a total of $271,679. Just so everyone understands, this is for the truck. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yes, that's for the truck. And <clears throat> the bank has actually recommended that, yeah, the bank has actually recommended that we have the select board make a motion so that Tom and I can just sign the loan documents rather than having the entire select board come because they're in a hurry to get a check. So rather than having to wait for the entire select board, if somebody would could or could make a motion to authorize Tom and I to sign the loan docs when they come, then we can get the check out as soon as we get the money. All right, so let's just go over again so everyone understands what we would be signing. It's a uh, payment for the new um, the new truck is in the community bank, and the loan is for two hundred seventy-one thousand six hundred and seventy-nine dollars at five point two four percent interest on a three-year a three-year term, making three payments. Is there a motion? Or that is a motion right there. Oh, second that. All right. Is there any uh, further discussion on it? Questions from the board? Well, just we're keeping the Mac. Yes, we are keeping the Mac uh, for a spare. Um, Kelly, you have a question? I would add that you and Cheryl were. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Kelly. That's why you're here. When John's not an issue, it was little things that I forgot. And uh, add to that motion that Sherilyn or myself can sign the phone docs when they come. All in favor, for aye. 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 All right. So we will you can that. sign that phone doc. Right? Yes, just that one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm going to get carried away. No, I wouldn't. Good question. All right, so John, you want to go ahead and uh, discuss uh, some other issues. Well, just that uh, we decided to push <laughs> the future trucks out so that we will, the next truck will take possession in 2028. So the 2027 purchase. Right. And then uh, we'll uh, start the financing rather uh, 2028. For that. that one we don't have, we won't. And then <clears throat> two years after that for the next truck, that way we won't have um, two payments right. um, trucks. Okay. So right now we are we would be scheduled to be purchasing a truck in what twenty six. This in twenty six, right? No, no twenty seven, and the uh, the recommendation is to push out to twenty eight. Right. No. Right. No. No. Wait. No, we would we would order the truck in 2027 and finance it so that our first payment is due in 2028. It's due in 2020. After right. the last payment on this truck is done. Right, so Correct. Okay. All right. That's how I said it the first time. No, you may. I'm just trying to clarify, John. <laughs> so I'm just trying to understand. All right, so wait now, but we're in 26. Trucks like every year. <laughs> so right now we're in 24. We right. have the truck coming. Right. So 25, yeah. 26, and 27, we have these payments. Right. So we'll order the next truck in 2027, starting payments in 28, 29, 30. And then right. we would then order another truck in 2030, starting payments in 20 and 31, right. 32, and 33. But uh, so that's that's all good. But currently we were, we were looking at doing it one year. Prior, and I just want to make sure that we've thought about 
the trucks in. Um, I mean, I haven't really talked to Martin about it, but um, I mean, I would think with a spare truck and be able to work it in there, we should be able to push it out. And that truck is the truck, Sean's truck, I think. That is, we've replaced the engine and did a, a number of other things. So it, theoretically, it should be able to be pushed a year. Um, but I guess, I mean, Ray, you're around this stuff. I mean, we've, you've been in these discussions all the time. I mean, you're seeing what's going on. What's your thoughts? You know, I feel like trucks are like in the alternative. Either they, you get a good truck and they'll last and you know, very durable, or you get a bad truck and you look at them and they fall apart. You know, and I, I think we're on a roll with a couple of the trucks that are doing quite well. I think pushing one out in the years is, 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 you know, the plans you have is okay, um, but there's no guarantee that something will happen. Right. You know, I think if there was, I think every person who deals with trucks knows it, it's difficult. You know, especially with the products that are coming out these right now, it's not like they used to be. Right. No, I mean it could last another five years, but it could be six months it could be yeah. ready to go. So well, well I think we've had that other truck that we've been fixing it all year, you know, for the past. Well that's year. what I'm saying. I mean it, it hasn't got any hours on it and it's got a new engine and I don't think and you know any difference, Callie, that the body is in good condition with that? Yeah, I would say so. It seems like it is, but yeah, they've been having a lot of problems with but, it. You know, it's going to stay on so long. Well, hopefully, we can win. I mean, that was in and out of the shop said. for a year, like, right? You know, yeah, I mean, I argue with the guy who bought it, not argue, but they finally agreed yeah. to fix it, right? Yeah, no, well, I think it's you know, we'll certainly go back, go ahead with this recommendation, and you know, we'll work. Um, and if you know, something comes up that we have to change, then we have to, we have to change course. Um, but at this point, and hopefully at that point, um, things will be a little bit more readily available if you need something. Uh, I mean, I think you're starting to see inventories um, on stuff, so. You could always go back to get a couple of horses. And there you go, Tom. Huh? Yeah, all right. Go back to the old days. Yeah, can you get hit? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, make verses like yeah. All right. So thank you for that. I know you guys are working on that, so uh, thanks for doing that. And so what else do you got, Sherilyn? John. John? I'm sorry, you're easier to talk. Um, was that it? No. Uh, we had discussed the $162,915.21 that has been transferred out of our oh, right, right. Okay. For the savings reserve? No, to the it's, in, it's sitting in the capital reserve fund right now. Right. And our recommendation was to use a portion of that to help lower the tax rate for right. 2024 and 2025. Right, okay. So that was, uh, so that's a decision for the select board. <clears throat> but I thought we also talked about taking money out of the savings reserve. Yes. So we have a, we have a vote coming up in August for the primary. So if the select board wants to use the ARPA funds or if you want to ask the um, voters, because the savings reserve was originally created to lower the tax rates. And Right. And times of hard times. So if the select board decides they want to ask the voters about this, they can ask the voters about this in August, but we will really be pushing it. So that's something that you guys really need to think about. And then if this tur is turned down, then maybe you can hold on to some of this money, but it's 162000 right. that's sitting in the capital reserve fund that you guys can use. But our recommendation- Would we use a little of both? You can do whatever you want. No. <laughs> but I mean, we could use some of the, you know, we could mm -hmm. add to that if we want. Yeah, but keep in mind, that's not capital reserve money. No, no. It's no, just no. sitting it's there, there right. so that you guys have access to it if you need it. So if we, when's the vote? It's oh. the second week in, second Tuesday in August the 13th. So how would that, 
don't we usually get our tax bills out? We're not going to because of the um, reappraisal this year. Okay. No taxes? No taxes. <laughs> we'll, we'll get our tax rate set, but um, because the, the grievances are happening, pre grievances are in May, the grievances are in July, or excuse me, June, and then there's 14 days after that that the vote that the taxpayers have to apply for a tax appeal, and then there's another 14 days after that where we have to start having meetings and then there's going to be hearings and site visits. I do not see that we're going to get the tax rate set until after the 13th. Until after that, thir that vote. Yeah. So that would be safe. Yeah, it would be safe. And it has to be warned, uh, what, 30 days? 30 days. So that would give us uh, mid-July. Right. So by the, fir the first meeting in July, we should make the decision. I would, it. yeah, I would definitely. Yeah, I would definitely not wait any longer than that because you gotta remember I gotta get the tabulator and the ballots done and the ballots have to be available twenty days prior to the thirteenth. So when when thank you. Uh, when is the next um, vote the um, high school vote? It's right, right now May thirtieth. May thirtieth. So um, We'll have that information in front of us, so we'll know pretty much what the the town, I mean, the, the school tax rate will be. Because it'll either be that one, or it'll have to defer to. You're shaking your head no. Yeah, I don't think no. we will. No, not usually, not all the time. I mean, you'll know what their budget is, but this it has to go, go to the state. state. state yeah. Right. Yeah. We usually find out in July what our tax rate is from the state. But usually, the second week in July. Yeah, we usually log in right when. Right when we have to print mm -hmm. our tax bills, and yeah. it's there. All right, so um, well, we might, should have a pretty good indication might from their, their mm -hmm. vote what it is. And we can do our own budget calculations. Right, and then they, the school has until July 1st to get a budget passed. If they don't get it passed, then they have to go back to last year's budget and use a percentage of that. So I don't know if the school's going to, their thought was is that. Let's get this vote in for May 30th so we can have another one on June 30th mm -hmm. if they have to. All right. Yeah. Um, and so we. Linda, did you have anything to share? No, I've been, you know, in agreement with the Finance Committee recommendations. Um, so, what, what kind of number are we talking about if we take capital reserve or? Opera funds. I mean, how much are we thinking of utilizing? That's. I mean, we, but you know, I mean, to reduce taxes, it's got to be a fairly sizable number. For so originally, if the same, if there wasn't a vote, the finance review committee was talking about using a portion of the lost revenue funds in the capital reserve this year and the other portion next year. Because if you look at this debt schedule in twenty twenty five. It's a huge increase in mm -hmm. in um, debt retirement. I mean, it's over a hundred thousand, hundred and thirty thousand dollars. And then you can see that it just keeps going up. And I did this spreadsheet with a projection after talking to the road crew, the fire department, and everyone, what they thought that the next needs were going to be. So this is, you know, an estimated debt schedule. Yeah. I have to ask a question. Um, did, I'm sure you considered using some of the ARPA money to pay down some of the truck loan. Like you're paying five percent of the truck loan. Would you, well, would you consider using some of that money to, to pay that down so you would have less of a loan? Yeah. So I figured that out today, and we're looking at around twenty-six thousand dollars in interest that we're paying just on this loan. $26,000. So that, that came across my mind today too, when I looked at the debt schedules. Because, yes, $27,643 just in interest. So I think that's, maybe you guys ought to think about that, that $160,000 towards just the truck. Forget the financing. Um, and that, that it's 
it's going to save look right there twenty seven thousand dollars. Well, that's something that you guys would have to think about and motion on tonight because of the loan documents. Because if that figure is going to change, and we're going to take twenty seven thousand or thirty thousand dollars, whatever, then this figure is going to change. It will lower our payments, not by a lot. Thirty thousand dollars isn't a lot of money when you have that much money you're financing, but it's still something. Well, I think we could, we could go ahead and still finance the, the truck, but if in a month you guys say, let's take that money, we can just pay it off. There's no uh, penalty to pay it off, is there? There's not, but it's not going to lower your payments either. But like I said, I don't think it's going to lower it that much because our first payment is $102,000, second payment is $97,300, and the second and third payment is $92,700. So, I don't think thirty thousand dollars is really going to touch that too much. I don't know, but I thought we were talking about using the ARPA funds. No, you can. I was just saying, if we finance this amount, these numbers aren't going to change until the second payment. Right. No, but not if we use one sixty uh, ARPA funds. Oh, yeah. You know, we use a hundred thousand towards the. It'll lower the the buy the cost of the truck that we borrow. Right? Yeah, if you're talking using the whole entire amount. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I'm not I'm just throwing out a number, you know, just. Yeah. I don't know if that's better than, you know, doing, using the money that way than trying to figure out what we would use to Cause that lower taxes, because that would seem to me it would have to be a big number for it really to make a difference, difference to each someone. person, right? Yeah. I think another thing, just what I'm thinking right now, I don't know what everyone else is thinking, but I, I kind of feel like if you're thinking about doing it that way, you should not use the money at all. Have a vote, let the taxpayers make the decision on the savings reserve fund, and then if they say no, then you still have this money left over to lower the tax rate. Yeah, but I, I think to a lower the truck truck payments. Or, or lower the truck payments. payments, yeah. Either way, it's going to help the taxpayers out. Just my two cents, I like that idea, Charlotte. Yeah, I, would, I would much rather see us ask the voters to use out of the fund that that's what we created for than to use ARPA funds, which are not replenishable. Right. And, and just so you know to the Finance Review Committee and our discussions, it's not in the minutes, um, we did talk about we need to keep $750,000 in the savings reserve fund because we're saving over $10,000 a year in interest by not having to have a tax anticipation note. So there's like a million dollars, a little under a million dollars in the savings reserve right now. So we, as the Finance Review Committee, have said Let's not let it get below the 750. Right. And the interest rate, I think I told you this week too, is going up on the savings reserve fund as well. So then we would ask the voters for, for roughly 250,000 if we were going to do that on the savings reserve. That would keep the 750 um, that's there that, we, that we're looking to maintain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it would be less than two, two fifty. Um, so why don't we? Can you share what two hundred and fifty thousand will actually look like on the tax rate? Yes, yeah, so you just go 281. Uh, where, where was it? 281, 570. Yeah. 
my house. With the, um, Ten cents. Okay. Right here, because yep. it was thirty-four. Yep. And now it's at twenty-seven. So just so you're all aware, Tom, I've been working on this tax rate worksheet and sharing it with Tom, and we've been discussing it. Last year's tax rate for municipal only was fifty-five cents. If you add in that two hundred fifty thousand dollars, it's point. It's twenty-seven cents. So that's how much it's dropped the tax rate. So if you don't have that. $250,000 in there, the municipal tax rate is $0.34. Cents. So there's $0.34, 27, three, the $0.07 cents difference by adding in that the $250,000. 250, yes. So $0.07 cents difference by adding that in. And if you guys want to discuss it and you need me to do up different formulas, I can do that. And then you guys can look at it, you know, throwing in 250,000 or throwing in 162, whatever. What to do is maybe you could send everyone out the worksheet mm -hmm. so everyone could kind of play with it themselves. Yeah. And then at the next meeting, we can um, make a decision if it's something we, we want to go ahead and do. But I do like the idea of keeping the 160 out of everything and then vote on the other 240, 250, whatever it happens to be. Um, I think it's probably the way to go. Yeah, and not knowing what the school rate is, because it, last year the school rate was on residential only, was 1.94. Mm -hmm. And I estimated it this year, and it's probably off at 2.05. I'm guessing it's probably going to be like 20 cents versus 10 cents. But at the same time, we just had a time-wide reappraisal, and our time-wide reappraisal is going to raise our CLA. So our 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 CLA is going to help our school tax rate. So I was kind of trying to be a little safe with it, but at the same time, we don't know what's happening in Montpelier or with the school budget. So right, but that was the whole point of having the, the reappraisal with the CM. Correct. Or, and we won't know what that's going to be until everything's done the second week, maybe third week in July. Clear as much, Sherwin. Yeah. Did I? You did great. Yeah. <laughs> John, did you have anything to add to any of that? Did I miss anything? No. You're right on. You're always right on. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. I think so. We have some so, things to think about. Um, there, there was also one other discussion. Do you want to bring it up? Sure. Um, and I'm doing an investigation on this right now, which is Airbnbs or VRBOs, you know, looking at whether or not, how, what other states and towns do as far as taxing, uh, you know, outside of yeah. that. So I'm just gathering some data on that right now um, and something to look at. I think it's a good idea. I think local, I think Warren is doing some things too. I know they were looking to get some software uh, to kind of try to figure out how many Airbnbs and such thing have. Do you have any idea in Moortown? We... There's a ton of them. If you go on, you, there's a ton of them. In Moortown? In Moortown. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that we had discussed was tipping fees. Or tipping fees, right? Or um, grow compost. Grow compost, yeah. Okay, tipping fees. So like, what do you think, what's going on? That... Well, like at the landfill. Right. So we had like a certain percentage for X, Y, Z that they had coming in or, mm -hmm. and stuff. So we had talked about, well, how big is grow compost? You know, they're yeah. here. Do we? We're, we're just all trying to come up with revenue for the town. Sure, certain sources of revenue. So yeah. local options that are they back in operation? <laughs> They've been bought out. Yeah, right. Like a right. cell. Like a yeah. cell, but I thought yeah. a cell wasn't really they're having trouble running that or doing it. I don't know until we investigate oh. really. I, I mean, thought I, I, would, I know you can't bring anything there right at the moment like we were when, mm -hmm. when it was broke compost. I don't know. I think they've been having troubles operating that there, but we could find out for sure. 
Yeah, I think this is a little thing too. I mean, I, I, need, I need you guys with plants, maybe you want to you know, look into that or just the other opportunities in town. Um, I think everything's on the, on the table to talk about, you know. Um, I mean, and the other thing that we had also discussed was is that the, this local hazard mitigation with all the buyouts out of Route 2, that we're looking at $2 million off on the grand list. So it's going to, then that's all going to fall on the taxpayers as well. So that's why we're trying to figure out a new, some income that's yeah. going to help the taxpayers out. Do we know when that'll kick in? When that's going to, is it 2025 if that'll happen? Yeah, I think, I think originally, what, 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 what was his name that came in and talked to you guys? I think he said it, it could it's be right. like a three, four year process, but. So looking at other creative ideas, I yeah. can think of, and that was our first meeting that we were trying to come up with, with other sources of revenue that we can provide time. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. We need a bar. Why don't you open one? That's a good idea. Yeah. You can do business, personal property, you can do local options tax. I mean, well, because I'm more business in Berlin, too. But we get a lot of money from business person property taxes. Mm -hmm. It's a pain, yeah. but you get I mean, Well, we, I mean, sometimes I think we forget the businesses that we have over on Route 2, you know, the corner there. There's there's the paving, there's uh, Oshans, mm -hmm. Hannon's. And that was just sold. It just came in. Hannon's now C Cajun. Is no longer the owner, but I, I believe another appliance company purchased the building. Nice. That's what it appears to be on the recording documents. But and then everything on the top of the side of the road, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think we want to grow business, but we need uh, you know maybe look at what they can provide for us as well. Absolutely. And I think the select board should also maybe possibly meet with the planning commission because the town plan is being rewritten now. And commercial drive, or commercial district is full. What's left of it is all on a footplane and nothing can be built on. So I think that the select board maybe should have a conversation with the planning commission, maybe to extend it. In, I don't know where, but it's just a thought. We talked about that too. Yeah. Well, good. It sounds like you guys have really given some thought to the finances in town and how not only our, exist, our existing, but how perhaps we can uh, certainly increase revenues, which is much needed. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll take your recommendations. Um, so, Cheryl, if you could send out the worksheet to everyone. Mm -hmm. For everyone to take an opportunity in the next couple of weeks, um, spend some time looking at it. Uh, also, send out the max amount of what to put in because we want to, if you wanted to keep the two set, uh, 750, uh, just I think it was 997 or something. So, whatever that is. I would say the max amount would be 250,000 right now. All right, so that's nice. We'll keep that. Um, People, you can play around with 250 or less, see what it does with the tax rate. It's something she we did put in the 250, and I guess it changed it around seven cents. So, um, knowing that, you can fool around with it, and then we'll make a decision at our next meeting whether to ask the, the voters on the 13th of August to um, allow us to use that 250,000. Okay, that's fair, everyone. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes. Yep. Barky, thank you for your patience. No. My little thing. Uh, you didn't have anything to do here. Ray and I are here. Ray, thank you. Let me stop sharing with you. Well, I think that's what gives you patience. Oh, that's the one thing that I can do. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. So let's see. Um, no, if you can. I think. Uh, did you forward these along? Or? This is the email.
Yeah. Nice little cap. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
work or investigating sites that you know we can do that as thoroughly as we can. Um, the um, so the letter updates the state in terms of where we are at, um, where the delays have been, and the real sticking point. There's several. One is the property um, um, purchase that we need to do, or is in the letter to do by the end of July. Um, we're also asked to come up with a budget for the design and permitting for a project, but it's essentially impossible to do a design and permitting <clears throat> when you don't have property to do the design and permitting with. So there's no way that we can um, put together a budget in order to propose a design permitting if we don't have property to do it with. So it's, um, it's, it's sort of a catch-22 here that as much as we want to move forward, we haven't been able to move forward um, as was our plan. And, and we can't either, and this is also in the letter, um, this is reminded to us by Emily um, Hackett last uh, week when we met, is that without a property purchase, we cannot continue on to the 90% preliminary engineering report, nor can there be a final preliminary engineering report. And so when we asked Emily about that, she was like, she didn't know what would happen um, within the process because you know we were the zero percent loan that we were given was to follow through until the final preliminary engineering report was was complete. Um, our money is not at risk um, as much as we can tell, um, but the risk of having a finished product is it seems to be likely because we cannot find property in order to design a system. Of um, so it's, um, as much as the, um, you know, it's, it's heartening to hear about solutions for things like getting the, the drive, the parking lot paved and things like that. Um, the Clean Water Committee is at a point now where we want to get those three sites um, investigated so that we'll know what we have um, for options. One of the things that we can do um, is to investigate these sites on our own without getting archaeological permission. If we did that and we used engineering time and we used equipment time and, and staff time from the town, um, then <clears throat> that money would not be reimbursable because the archaeologists hadn't cleared it yet. So that's a risk. We could do that. Um, the state doesn't recommend it, but I, my sense is they don't recommend it because they can't be on record of recommending a process that is unreimbursable. I think they're just, you know, I haven't, you know, that's not anything any of them are going to be able to step out and say for certain uh, is the case. Um, so, hypothetically, if, if the town used its own money, unreimbursable, investigated the three sites, then we found a site and we found a willing land property owner that was willing to sell it, the archaeologist is going to be involved with the design of permitting anyway. So it, that oversight will happen by at, at some point in the process. The likelihood of that happening is we haven't really ever decided on a proper percentage, but we are not terribly optimistic about that. Um, so I'm not here to propose I'm here to suggest that that is an option that the town could pursue, and I can give you numbers um, in terms of how much it costs to do the, um, the dig the last time. Uh, we have invoices from Otter Creek, and, um, and we have the invoice from, uh, from the equipment um, rental company. I think it's somewhere in the order of three to five thousand um, dollars. And if we, if the town spent say $5,000 of its own money, unreimbursable to investigate those three sites, we would be a lot further along in terms of knowing whether we actually have anything that's viable. Um, that's not why I'm here tonight to ask for that, but I did want to put it out as, a, as an option. So, Ray, what Can you remind me what the three sites are again? Um, over, it's a property that David DeFries owns at the, basically at the corner of 100 and 100B. 
uh, sort of it's on the north <coughs> east corner, uh, just on the other side of where the manure pit is. There's a section that is not in the easement that he's okay with us digging in. Um, obviously, the soccer field, you know, is, you know, right, yeah. we can put that back together. Um, and I haven't um, approached the Bose Act at this point because things are so vague, and I didn't want to, you know, propose something that I couldn't answer directly. Um, but I think at this point that um, depending on how we move forward, that's, you know, it's time to have that conversation again. You know, and we've had that conversation before, and it's been, um, you know, politely declined at this point. So um, certainly we'd be going back to the well, so to speak, in order to check with them. Um, but the, the freeze property in the soccer field, you know, that's open and we can, you know, we can do that. There, there was an issue, I mean, I remember the take away from the meeting that we had at the school was crossing the rivers. This, uh, well, this, this, that's the that thing, was, it's, it's all speculation at this point because, you know, if that was a viable property, then yeah, those are, yeah, then we need to talk it. about like, oh well, I mean, how expensive is this? Is this something that, I mean, it could be that a final engineering design could include that sort of thing and it could be, I don't know, $20 million, 15 whatever it is. Um, and but right now, it's, it, it doesn't feel, I mean, we can't speculate because it's just, it's just not enough data. We don't have the information at this point. I don't want to get sidetracked on this, but I just, that meeting was very informative that I went to. And when the engineer made that, his presentation, one of the takeaways I had was, you know, yes, this is a multiple steps laying the groundwork for, mm -hmm. Someday this happened, you know, someone will have to pick up the flag, maybe from all of us to carry it off. But, um, was the idea about, um, especially if these other two sites don't work out, which is, was the municipal water system, which would free up land for multiple, several multiple small systems in the village. And that to me seemed like a, a very viable option. I mean, you know, I think uh, I think that is an option. Uh, what I found most disturbing about the decision was the uh, we have to purchase land by the end of July. Yeah. It is May. We cannot do that. Uh, and I asked I asked the uh, Emily, can you give us a verbal saying we have to end, we need to end the year to sort this out. Uh, we, can, we can't we can't buy land like this. Can't get experts without the state approval. Can't do this without the engineer getting involved. It's it just yeah. we're stuck in this. But uh, we have to buy the land there. to use the funds that we've been given. Is that? Yeah, we can't buy land not knowing what we're buying. No, no, I understand, but and that's to, to buy the land is to utilize this funding that we have. Yeah. Otherwise, right. it's going to go to another, right. to another town. But if we if we get test pits and we find that none of these properties are going to work, then it goes back to what you're saying about maybe going another program. Putting in the water going and you know, that way we could have more space in the village for sewer. Right. But there's no mention in their letter about that option. It's all about buying land by the end of July. Mm -hmm. And that'll them, and they won't make a decision on that until she wouldn't say October. So July is going to pass, and we're not, we, we will not know if we can, if our time is extended or not. So I, I, I want to go forward with test bits, but I don't want to be wasting our money here. If they're not going to give us an extension, then what, what are the test bits for? Do we think they'll, they'll never be funded? I mean, there'll be other funding yeah, coming to it. Yeah, you know, it's not like. I understand they want to take the opera funds and utilize them for another town that might be further ahead, but I mean, should, I understand the urgency, but should we feel like we should be under that pressure just because we we have this money? I mean, and then won't there be other funding sources down the road when we... There are always other funding sources. There have been municipalities that have put in systems um, that didn't have it's a, it's a um, uh, 
process that has lots of different grant applications that you have to apply for and that kind of thing. You know, I think the, the um, not the urgency really, but the desire to take advantage of resources that are there, um, like the ARPA money, is, is genuine and I think we should do as much as we can no, with, that's reasonable. And we can use ARPA money in order to purchase property that's right. certainly, you know, within the, the, within the realm. Um, State said it's um, uh, towns have been buying properties for wastewater sites that have been appraised value plus a hundred thousand. That's about the average that um, that, that um, people have gotten for selling properties for wastewater systems. Um, the um, the other big point that, that's made in the letter here is to offer um, an idea for use of the ARPA funds, and that is to use the ARPA money that that Moortown was awarded to um, allow everyone to put in a new um, septic system at their That's individual something. property, um, as well as to reimburse people who have put them in in the last 15 years. It's like, you know, three and a half, three point three million million goes a long way with individual yeah. septic systems. So, you know, when we, I mentioned that to Emily, she sort of was like, what? like speechless at that point. Yeah. You know? I mean, they don't have anything. I mean, but that makes it great. That's, you know, and it's like solution. I mean, you know, it's like I don't. You know, where would the money go? I mean, what would it? Where would it rest if we? You know, so it's in the, You know, I if you see. decide to send this letter, it'll be in our lap, and they'll have to work. Yeah, right. I can't see them approving that. Yeah, it's very, it's very frustrating uh, because the state has recognized that we have a problem here that needs to be resolved or fixed. You know, in the next ten or fifteen years, and. They give us the money, like a little tease, and then they say, oh, you, now, now we're going to take it back now because we, we didn't spend it fast enough, but we didn't spend it fast enough because they can't give us the help that we need to get it done. And it's, and, you know, in my, in my opinion, you know, the, the, they're, they're under, the, under the gun to get rid of this money because nobody wants to say, well, we had money, we couldn't use it. And, but they can't use that money because of their own, I think the word incompetence, but I think that's what the word is. They can't get it done. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure I would go quite that far, but it certainly feels that way from time to time. But it certainly, whether it be short staffing or, you know, everybody's got, is overcommitted, I don't know. But it certainly does feel sometimes that people just don't have their act together. And that's been really frustrating. As, as much as, you know, um, this, the, every time that the Clean Water Committee meets, um, Emily and the sort of the person in the state that is responsible for um, permitting in-ground systems is there. And they listen and they're professional and they offer their opinion and their perspective and their and information. Um, but the comments that were due to Otter Creek, you know, uh, February, March, April, I mean, it's almost been a quarter, a quarter of the years gone by and they haven't sent in the comments. It's like. Come on, what's, you know, what's going what on? What is there a response you can give us to about that? I, next week. I, I, yeah, it's that, and I've, uh, I've sent two text messages in the last 10 days, and I have not, I, they don't even respond to my text messages at this point. Is there a, anyone in there that they you report know, to? Report to that you could? Well, I know Neil, um, the person who signed the rescission letter, um, but, I mean, he's I mean, the he's, he's one that's probably approving their schedules and their work, you know. So I don't think it's going to be like any surprise to him that this, I mean, I, you know, everybody that, that I become aware of who's in infrastructure work is, is like everything is, you know, backed up and crazy and, um, and, and wastewater systems are really complicated. Uh, they're not, you know, and you know, you have, a, you know, you have a blown culvert, you have a, a road that's sloughing off and falling into the river. You know, these are immediate, important things to jump on. And planning like this, it seems like it doesn't get the attention that, that it should. Right, and there's different priorities, and they keep changing their priorities, and you, you're never going to get anything done like that. Yeah, and you know, and I don't envy anybody who's trying to figure out how to use the ARPA money. Because it's a third, it's a thankless job. Because everybody wants to hold on to what they were awarded, 
and the state wants to make sure that they don't have to tell anybody that they sent money back to D.C. You know, that could have been used in Vermont. I mean, I get that. That's that's a that's a worthy goal to have. Um, so to wrap this up, we should go ahead and sign this letter that I'm going to do with the board. Wants me to. Uh, or. So the, um, the committee is meeting tomorrow afternoon um, without the engineers or without any from the state because we, we need to formulate kind of where we're going to go from here. Um, and I think Ray's right. I mean, I'm very tempted to propose strongly that the town pays for the test pits, but on the other hand, it, it you know it may not get us any further than I mean. It, it, by some miracle, if if the DeFries property or the Bozak, I mean, you know, or it fantasize about the the soccer field passing, then you know we might be able to. It would be great to move forward to a final design and permitting. I mean, that would be that would be huge because that's what happened in Waitsfield. They had design and permitting done, so they had real numbers uh, for a real project. And and, and so anyway, I well, great. Aren't we going to have a small excavator here for this parking lot, right? We, we will, yes. Could we do the, the field, the soccer field? We could. Do a test pit at that time? Yeah, I believe we could. Because I'd have to make sure, we have to have the engineer um, and yeah. their hydrologist here because they have to investigate what they find when they dig the pit. Yeah. You know, they're, they, they jump in the pit and they're counting all these layers of soils yeah. and all that stuff. But we're going um, to do that next month anyway. Yeah, for June. So there's a possibility that we could possibly do this one here anyways. Yeah. Um, at a very low cost. Right. I mean, if the excavator's here, and you know, we've got a crew to operate the excavator, it's just paying for engineer and hydro uh, hydrologist time, probably. So that that might be a couple thousand bucks, maybe. We could use our offer funds for that. Yeah. 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 The other offer funds that we have, we still have some left. Right. We could use that. I, I can say that, uh, I, I mean, I know the test bits are, are probably just a day or two days or whatever, but the road crew between the parking lot and the field work and everything else, they, they are getting back still. You know, we can't, if we pull them off to do something else, it just. That's fair. It has yeah. a, uh, no, I, I an understand. impact somewhere down the road, you know, so. Uh, if we can get this done before they start, you know, before school closes and before they start the parking lot. But, you know, I know they're planning on getting some field work done uh, before that time. So they're just, uh, they're under the gun to get a lot of stuff. No, I understand. What about when the guy comes back, the contractor we have here comes back? Could we have him dig him up? Pull possibly. Him pull him. Yeah, that's a yeah. possibility. Yeah. That's yeah. Pay him, you know. Well, to, you know, I think rather than expect, I mean, the committee's going to meet tomorrow, and I think we can put together our recommendations. We'll have real numbers that we can let you know about, and so we can share that with you. Um, and, and as far as the letter goes, do you want what do you want with that? Um, well, it need, it, well, it's due next Tuesday. If you want to, you know, I, it's it's pretty pointed. It's not, you know, I'm, it's not a scathing letter. But it really points out the dilemma that the town is in, asking for the delay for the purchase until the end of December, and also provides, you know, focuses that idea about give us some money to put in right. our antiseptic system. Right. So that's about it. I mean, the way that you, you if the way this is written right now, you just see it with like on a more town letterhead. Yeah, just it. more town letterhead to um, that would be going to Emily. I can get you all the specifics. Yeah. Why don't yeah, you yeah, add some back to? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll make sure. But in this it. format you're thinking of going, this is the format. Yeah, I like the, f I, you know, I don't know, raise that. Mm -hmm. did you feel yeah, right? I think no, it's good. I, I, I read Later. it when I came across in the yeah. email. I was just curious. If you... Yeah. So get it on letterhead? And yeah, just put it on letterhead. And, and then going have ahead. a signature spot for Tom to mm -hmm. sign it, and then we'll just get it sent out for a good deadline. Yep, and it's um, going to Emily. I can get you Emily's, like, you know, address, work address and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So ideally, if it was this right here on the soccer field, that would be because we already own the land. Right. That would be ideal. Yeah. See, the thing that um, Good ideal location here it is. Paul. So I will speculate on one thing, and I, yeah, I, I don't want to take away from any more business. That um, 
when I asked the engineer, like, why can't we just like put 30, 30 feet of, of really permeable, great sandy soil and just have a soccer field on top of that and just pump everything out there? And, and his response was, it, it really has everything to do with the soils that are really underneath wherever that is. Because if it goes down through 30 feet and it gets to that clay layer and it starts to come out, well, then that's not good. And I'm thinking to myself, well, after 30 feet, what's going to be in that's going to be bad? But, um, you know, it's like, and there's pre-treatment. You can pre-treat before you ship it off to a, um, to a disposal field, So, which is what one of the ideas is here for at Bozak's field. And, you know, why can't we do a pre-treatment and then put a big mound over on the soccer field? I, I don't know the answer to that. That's, and I'm sorry that I threw that out there because it's pure speculation, but um, it sure would be an elegant solution. So. All right, well, thank you for your hard work. I know it's pretty frustrating, it sounds like, or it is, I, we've seen it. Well, uh, I really appreciate the, the support that um, the select board has had, and also, you know, your, your, you know, all the really good questions and concerns that you've had along the way, so. Um, so so I do have a question just in terms of making sure that I get the information out properly. Um, there'll be minutes taken after tomorrow's meeting, which um, I can just, that would be the most recent update I can send to you, Tom. Is, sure. And then, you know, you can forward it on to the board. Yep. Is that sound reasonable? That's it. Okay. Yep. All right. Hey, partner. Ray, thank you. Good night. Good to see you again. We'll talk again soon. Yes, we will. Thanks for your, uh, all your efforts. You know what they say. The it all flows downhill, right? Yeah. It's a great day. It all flows you know that expression, right? <laughs> I won't use the Good word, night, but we all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh. All right, so we are behind to this. Uh, sorry that we've down yes so see so what we need to do next on the agenda we need to appoint a custodial official so sasha could you share us uh with us uh, just moving along in the aco ordinance yep. um this is the next part that needs to be taken care of that way Stephen can go ahead and issue tickets to repeat offenders that are in town and that was the whole motivation behind right. getting us going I've drafted two different letters. Um, Stephen asked that the first constable, Chong, Chong Chinat, be added as well to be able to issue tickets. And I have a letter with just Stephen on here and just and then one with the both of them. So okay. whichever way you guys want to keep it. Also, they need to have appointed a custodial official, which is just doing the administration part. And the guy at the LCT suggested that I do it since I'm just like a message taker and make sure that Stephen gets what he needs, vice versa. Right here in the office. So that yeah. That's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So um, the first thing is we need to talk or make a decision on is on the ordinances or, or as far as if one is giving a ticket, whether it can be both, uh, the ACO person and the first constable. Either or and or yes and or well, both right either one can do yeah. it. yes so I think that's probably a good idea rather than just mm -hmm. step on right right all yeah. right yeah. so let's go with that one and then I would uh, move to appoint Sasha the custodial official um, to the ACL second thanks Kelly any discussion on that. Well, only that, so now Tom or Stefan can issue a ticket, and the ticket is a fine? It goes to the Judicial Court in St. Johnsbury, and there's a now a process for it, once that is in place. And there is a fine. And it would be a fine. Yeah, ultimately. Uh -huh. Yeah, so sadly, so finally there's a little teeth in the ordinance now, right. whereas before we set a ticket. Kind of pretty much do what you want with it. Yeah. Um, so is that two motions? That motion and the, the one for Sasha? 
Uh, yeah, the one for Sasha, I think that's the only motion that's out there. Okay. <clears throat> so all in favor of uh, appointing Sasha the custodial official? Or I? Aye. 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 And so should we vote on the, um, oh, we should vote on as far as who could do the tickets pull yeah. stuff on and the, right. Mm-hmm. All right. So what Tom was, what John was saying. Yeah. I, that's why I'm breaking it up. Uh, so I move that we uh, allow both the uh, ACO and the first constable um, to write um, uh, tickets for the uh, ACO. For, for vi- violations? For violations. Pardon me. Uh, Thank you, John. Okay, I'll second that. All right. I'll, if there's any other discussion, none. Seeing none here, none. I'll go for that. All right. Thank you. We got that done. And now let's go ahead and move on. Sasha, you have reports, communications? Yes. Um, I have some things that didn't get done last time. Uh oh. Meetup, um, a motion, I think Sean talked to you about this one, a motion to reflect the wording on the archive. Just in the minutes. Uh, all right, I thought we did this, but I would um, move to allow Cheryl Lynn to um, move $27,020.74 from the general fund to the capital reserve. Um, I think that's, that's all she wanted, right? Thank you. Yep. So it's not for operating expenses or? Uh, yeah, just, should, I'm requesting your permission to transfer the remaining funds of, of the ARPA to the general fund. Second. John seconds. Uh, all in favor of what I? Aye. Aye. And it's something we had talked about in the group, but I guess yep. we just didn't. I don't think that is involved because that wasn't here. So all right, that's fine. And then uh, the bird's eye forestry invoice. Yes. Where should I take that? I think um, there's going to be money that we can take it out of the select board uh, fund that we have for discretionary, discretionary pay. Is that how much was it? it was 18. 18 yeah, so it's like a couple thousand. So the little work. All right, and See how they can get that many events in. That's a lot of events. Sherilyn left the budget status report for you guys. Yep. And the Mad River Valley Rec District. Um, did everybody see the email from Laura? She was just checking in. Looking to see if there's anything else yet. Yeah, I don't, at this point, there hasn't been any discussion about it. We've got enough financial discussions in front of us right now. Uh, but I think, you know, in a month, month or so we'll bring it up and at least give them a decision on what we're going to do. That's all I have. Very good. Kelly, have you had anything that was tonight? No. Can we give us some updates on uh, free wheel and stuff or anything like that? There's nothing there? No, nope, no, there's nothing there. Uh, right. um, John, what have you got for us tonight? Um, I don't have anything. Very good, Robin. I uh, know, I'm good. Big Don, you've been gone for less than so, I did see that the email about the complaints on Route 2. Did anything ever come of that? There was, you forwarded an no, email from... I haven't heard anything from... I mean, were, were they 
they were sending a letter to the select board to see what we could do to help them or they something? They just called in to see if there was anything the select board could do. Right, and we can't um, I mean, you know, tell people to pick up their, their property. It's not no, I, I don't know. Is it like a health officer thing? I mean, I only read, read the email. I didn't I know. Forward it to you know what, with something like that, forward it to the, both the health officer and also Seven. the zoning administrator. And then, um, well, I thought I thought I saw it for this. Oh, we're, at some point, we're going to get to the merit pay. We're doing this tonight. Yeah, doing that tonight. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's good. Um, well, then I was just going to check. So we heard back from Alex about doing the screen and the thing. No. What? He was going to come the following week. Yeah. And I haven't heard anything. All right. So I'll send him an email oh. and ask him. Okay. Yes. Um, and just kind of curious because I heard there was a sighting in town, but any update on our friend Frank Piazza? Nothing. No, Ron, no, uh, okay. the He's last thing I had from Ron and Steve, Steve was trying to find a contractor. Um, Steve, who's Steve? He is, he was the gentleman that came in that was during the presentation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sitting back here, and he agreed to be, um, to try to help. Right, he was going to take it on. Um, is he still being, I mean, is it the Yeah, fine he and Ron said, well, the fine is still going on. Is going on, but I mean. Yeah, I don't know, it's just crazy. But you know what, it's been a couple of weeks since I've reached out to Ron about it. I'll reach out again and see if there's any. Well, you have a lot on your plate. But, you know, no, it's, it's good, good to just push him a little bit. But he had, he had had a, he'd been out of town on, so it, it's been a little. There, but no, I think there's be nice to get something cleaned up with that. And then, um, I just I, we touched on it briefly, but on Fox Farm, I was going to just bring that up to see what the status was because just to see if we get another big rain thing with that, if they were you know, what the, what the status of that was. I don't know how we, you know, okay. I guess I could, we yeah. could look at it, you know, again, if we can tell people to do. No, but it does impact the town property, so it's, you know, I can check with Mark, I know Mark and Stefan, they're all busy down there, whether he actually had time to go up there and try to blow out those two culverts. Yeah. But anyways, okay, so I can maybe sleep around that a little bit. And, um, no, I guess that's it. I always can come up with more, but that's good for now. Yeah. <laughs> um, good. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else that we have that uh, we're not going to talk about. Uh, actually, uh, Don, what about um, <clears throat> uh, Mike or Forrester? What about him? Where, where the money was going to come from? Oh, we just, John, we talked about that. Um, we're going to take that out of the select board discretionary fund. Oh, okay. That's okay. I'm sorry. I, that's right. Oh, I can hear. Um, so I think that's that's if there's any other uh, old business that we have. Well, one other. Did we ever hear anything back from GMP on with street lights? Nothing Not yet. No, but I will. No, no, it's oh, fine. It's a lot, you know, it's you know, kind of that. Did, 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 did they, those people ever contact GMP? The folks, I don't yeah. know if they have, have personally, yeah. but that, that could be a good you know, for them to do it too. Yeah, if they, I think. Because I know they've really been trying to park. No, I think they're trying you know, to do really it. do it, so it would be nice to try you know, to help, help, help them out a little bit too. But that's, uh, I, when I go by there, I'll suggest that maybe they, we're trying, but maybe they could reach out as well. Yep. Yeah. You know, because you know, really, I would think they would do something just a shield, just a yeah. Anyways, all right. Um, anything else, John? Uh, no. That's it. All right. What about is there any any new business anyone has urgent pending? Nothing. All right. Well then, um. Let's go ahead and approve, approve the minutes. We have minutes from um, 
415 and 56 to approve. I move we accept the minutes of 415. Second it. Thank you, Robin. Any um, further discussion on uh, 415 2024 minutes? All in favor, vote aye. 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 All right. And May 6th, is there a motion there? I make a motion to approve the minutes from May 6th, 2024. Thank you. Second. Thanks, John. Any uh, discussion on those or changes? All in favor, vote aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And uh, if there's no old business, no new business coming up, we can go ahead and move on to um, discussion on employee reviews. So I would uh, move that we go into executive session. Um, this is um, making, we've made a uh, finding that the premature public knowledge would clearly uh, place the public or person involved with substantial disadvantage. And number three, the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee. Provided that we make oh, a final decision. Oh. Ah, I was just reading off the rest of the ordinance. Yeah. Provided that the public body shall make a final decision to hire or appoint a public officer, officer or employee in open meeting, and shall explain the reasons. And we're not uh, hiring or firing anyone, so we don't need to worry about it. But we're evaluating. No. We're just evaluating. So, uh, and it will be just the board.